So I think it's a really interesting time, Andy, and I can't think of a more uh, fulsome subject, particularly at this moment in time, as you look at all the uh, traditional legacy uh, media companies, Warner Media, Disney, Comcast, NBC, Universal, you've got Viacom and CBS who are you know, obviously coming together rapidly here and they're gonna have their offering and uh, you know, you can't forget, of course, Netflix and Hulu uh, and Amazon, uh, and now Apple enters the race. It sounds like uh, alphabet soup in terms of a lot of names, and one should never, uh, in these conversations, write off Quibi with, with Jeffrey Katzenberg and Meg Whitman. And, you know, the, the interesting moment in time is whoever predicted that it really always was about the content was right. Because at the end of the day, I think the winners here will be uh, based on two things. First and foremost, what it should be, the content and the quality of that programming. Uh, you call the television, I would just say content and use a broader base term. That's number one. But number two, once we see the user interfaces and the way that the consumer is going to interact, that's going to be an important part of this. If you think about it from that perspective, we're fortunate on left coast and right coast in many instances to be able to just add on subscriptions. But, you know, I would submit to you, Andy, in, in the real world, not that we don't live in the real world, but in the real, real world, people are going to have to make some binary choices. They're going to have to choose amongst the various opportunities or offerings. And again, coming back to why they would make those choices, first of all, it would be economic. Not everybody can add 10 subscription services to their monthly expense, number one, if they're SVOD. Number two, they're going to go where the content is going to be the most compelling. Everybody's got a good story as to what their content's going to be. The original content, the library and the catalog content, and you know the movies and, and, and sports. So that's the second element. And the third's obviously going to be that user interface. But there's another situation that's upon us, and being here at a, at a Xander uh, AT&T Relevance Conference, and I've been saying this for the last kind of eight, nine months uh, after the CES conversation around 5G. There's another uh, element that's happening. 5G is, as uh, AT&T said uh, eight or nine months ago, the, the uh, technology of yes. And what they meant by that was when you ask, will 5G impact this, the answer is generally yes to every question. So on the one hand, you've got a technology that's going to really have massive impact on the ability for a consumer to enjoy content in lots of different ways in a faster, uh, more effortless uh, manner, number one. And number two, we have this other element that's on the horizon, which is autonomous driving. And you may wonder why I'm bringing those two together. Just think of the fact that the commute that most consumers have in their day jobs uh, you know, today, all of a sudden, they're going to be handed back an hour, 45 minutes, two hours a day of commute time that normally they had their hands on the wheel. Think about the ability and the, and, and the increased opportunities for consumption of content when you're sitting in a driverless, uh, autonomously driven automobile. And I'll be honest, I have a car that could be autonomously uh, driven. I haven't done it yet. I haven't had the guts to let go, of, you know, take my hand off the wheel. Uh, so I'm not sure I'm there, but I know we will be there. I kid around with my grandkids and say, the good news is I'm never going to have to buy you a car because by the time you're old enough, no one's going to own a car. Now, I know Detroit and other auto manufacturers would hate to hear that, but on the one hand, doesn't mean there's going to be, um, you know, a, a, a shutdown of the auto industry, but it does mean there's going to be a slowdown in in, in auto, but on the other hand, there's going to be an increase in content consumption. So I think when you look at all those things coming together, it's a perfect storm, but it's a perfect storm that we as consumers, I think, can just revel in. Because I don't know about you, but I'm always looking for my next binge. I'm always looking for that next new bit of content that can capture my attention and, you know, capture my, uh, my hearts and mind, if you will. How do you see sort of the opportunities and the demands uh, for, for these brand marketers? Well, look, I think they're the same as they've always been. They have to make investments intelligently. They have to generate a return on that investment or a classic investor's context of a, an ROI. 
I think it's harder to do that today on the one hand because the diaspora of consumers' attention continues to dog the marketers. But on the other hand, as, as it's been said by people way smarter than me, it's somewhere between a one and two trillion dollar business that's not gonna go away. Brands and, 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 and product manufacturers and service offerings still need an outlet to consumers to let them know the product or service exists. And they're not gonna just stop advertising, we know that, but they have to reimagine it. And the same thing that we can talk about in terms of binary choices that consumers gonna have, whether they're gonna pitch, pick HBO Max versus Disney Plus versus Hulu versus Peacock versus bundles of, of all of those. Again, going to be a hard choice, but in those that are SVOD, imagine all of a sudden, and I guess that's really at the heart of your question, Procter & Gamble and Unilever and Coca-Cola and, you know, Apple and, and the other, you know, consumer brands that are all, you know, tapping on your window. They still need to find a way to be bundled somehow with content because that's how you've enjoyed commercial messages. You know, you could argue that some people haven't enjoyed them, but that's how you've received commercial messages since the beginning of time, bundled with content in some way, whether it started a magazine or a newspaper and made its way to radio and television and online, that's still the way you do it. You wrap it in content or you wrap the message or the content is wrapped around the message one way or the other. So that dilemma, you know, I think I've probably given you a lawyer slash consultant's answer, which is I haven't given you an answer, but that's because uh, there are no easy answers at this point. I wanted to ask you about sort of some of the sort of calculations and uh, demands and expectations in, in the agency uh, kind of review uh, issues that are happening now or that have been going on the last few months? Well, it's more than the last few months. I mean, you know, Andy, you and I have chatted in this seat uh, several times over the last five or six years, beginning with, you know, Media Palooza, uh, you know, Pitch Palooza back in 15, I guess, is the year that was branded uh, as such. And I've told you this before, it's the new normal now. It's not any Palooza, it's just ongoing, number one. Number two, I think clients and agencies are com coming to a day of reckoning that some of the promises that are being made by the agencies are going to be harder and harder to deliver on and the clients are uh, driving the marginal pressure even more so because they're feeling it. And so what happens is, you know, that old expression about uh, it rolls downhill, I'll keep this clean for uh, general consumption, but if the marginal pressure hits the brand, the brand ha has to pass that marginal pressure on somewhere, and that pressure valve, if you will, gets released onto the agency in so many cases. So it's not only around staffing, but it's around pricing. And it's not only pricing for your fees, it's pricing for the media that you're placing. And uh, I think everybody has to be aware of promises made and the ability to keep those promises. From a media link perspective, it's always been a, a wonderful gift that we are in the room, as you've heard me say more than once, where it happens, uh, relative to being able to listen and understand the landscape as well as we can when you hear the best people pitching their best ideas on their best days. It's, it's quite a, 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 a strong advantage for us in the marketplace.